Hi everyone and welcome to a CUDA worksheet tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the Pythagorean Theorem. So let's go ahead and start. First, we need to understand what is the Pythagorean Theorem about? Well, this only ap uh, applies to right triangles. So a triangle that has a 90 degree angle, that's a prerequisite for this. So it has to have a 90 degree angle. And the logistics of this is that we have three sides to this triangle where the third side is the longest side, okay? The third side is known as the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longest side, as I said, hypotenuse is spelled like this. And it's always opposite the 90 degree angle. It's not touching the 90 degree angle, okay? Um, the other two sides are called legs. And actually, I'm gonna change the color. I want three different colors here. So our legs would be this side, okay? The legs are the two sides forming the right triangle, or the right angle, I should say. Okay, so we have three sides here that form the legs of the triangle. So these are known as legs. And it doesn't matter if they're the same length, different length, because the Pythagorean theorem applies to both those situations. So what is the Pythagorean theorem? Well, we're gonna have a plus in there, we're gonna have an equals, and we're gonna have this side squared, one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared, and it doesn't matter which order, you could do b squared plus a squared, and then that is equal to the hypotenuse squared. This is true in every single right triangle, so you can use this relationship all the time. Now, I'm not gonna go into the proof of why this works. There's some really good videos uh, on that out there on the internet, um, but I'm just gonna go in straight into the application of this. So the first questions are asking, do the following lengths form a right triangle? Well, we're gonna use this Pythagorean theorem. If we know every right triangle has this property, then we're gonna go ahead and plug these in and figure out uh, if this is in fact a right triangle. Now, you don't see a right triangle here, your right angle. We don't know if it's a right triangle. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna assume that the longest side is gonna be the hypotenuse and that these two smaller sides are gonna be the legs. Okay, so we're in our formula here. I'm just gonna copy and paste it again. Copy, paste it, I'm gonna reference it multiple times. We're gonna choose uh, A to be our smaller side, so that's gonna be six squared, plus we're gonna choose B to be this other smaller side, so that's eight squared. And then our longest side, our hypotenuse, has to be nine because it's the biggest number, nine squared. So we need to see if this is true. What we need to do here is we need to do 36 plus 64. Is that equal to 81? And it is not. This is equal to 100, and that is not equal to 81. So this is not a right triangle. Okay, done with number one. It's not a right triangle because it doesn't have that relationship. Let's go on to number two. Again, we want to identify the longest side. This is going to be our hypotenuse, hopefully, okay? Because we don't know if this is a right, uh, a right triangle or not. That would be where the right angle would be, but we need to figure that out. This would be another side, and then we'd have another side, the two smaller sides. It doesn't matter which one's A, quote unquote, or which one's B. We just know that 12 squared plus, oh, wrong color, blue, five squared is going to be equal to 13 squared, okay? Or we wanna find out. So we have, this is gonna be equal to 144 plus 25, is that equal to 169? And it is, 169 is equal to 169. That's a good thing, we know we have a right triangle now. So this is, yes, it is a right triangle. And do they, they do form a right triangle. You're gonna do the same process with these ones. It's fairly simple. Okay, this one's just decimal, so it'll be a little bit more complicated, just use a calculator. But otherwise, it's not too bad. Okay, now find each missing length to the nearest tenth. So now we're gonna apply it even further and we're gonna try to find the missing side. Now with these ones, if you, you have to be told that it is a right uh, triangle. So this one, we see a 90 degree angle. So the side opposite is gonna be the hypotenuse. So we know this is a 90 degree angle. We know this is gonna be um, using the Pythagorean theorem. So we can just plug in values here. So we have two legs. These are the ones that form the 90 degree angle. 
Okay, and it doesn't matter which ones we call A or B. So we have eight squared plus our B squared is gonna be four squared. And that's gonna be equal to, we don't know the value of the hypotenuse, so we're just gonna call it C, C squared. So now we just solved. We have 64 plus 16, and if you need help, just you know use a calculator for that. Eight times eight, eight squared. Four times four, four squared, equals C squared. Here we get 70. Okay, so 64 plus 16 equals 70. That is, six, uh, that's not 70, <laughs> it's 80, I'm sorry. So it's 80, and now to finish it off, we have to take the square root of both sides. Now, technically, this is a correct answer. Now, if you're in uh, like a chapter eight or you're one of those geometry students, honors geometry students, whatever, and your teacher wants you to simplify this, I would suggest watching my videos on simplifying radicals. I can do that real quick for you. I think 16 is a factor of 80. Let me just double check. Okay, so we could rewrite this as square root of 16 times square root of 5 equals C. So then this would become 4 radical 5 equals C. If you're one of my students, this is what you need to do. Congratulations. All right, moving on to the next one. Again, we have the two legs. Okay, let's go a, bit, a little bit quicker now. We're looking for the last side, C. So we know that 3 squared plus 6 squared is going to be equal to C squared. So we have uh, what's this? nine plus 36 equal to C squared. That's 45 equals C squared. You need to take the square root of both sides. Don't, if you're one of my students, don't just leave it at square root of 45. We need to use the prime factor tree. Three, uh, what is that? 15, three, five. We have a pair of threes. That means it's gonna be three radical five. See how we did this one a little bit differently? Same result, we get the correct answer. Three radical five. Let's do one that's given the hypotenuse. These are all legs, you're gonna be finding the, the hypotenuse. That's pretty straightforward. Again, these are all legs that are given. Uh -huh, finally, it gives us something with the hypotenuse. So here is a little bit different than the other ones that we've been doing so far. We have a leg, we have a hypotenuse, and we have another leg here. Notice now that we have the hypotenuse and we're missing a leg, we'll call it B or should I call it A? Whatever, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna call it A. So we're gonna set this up, just like we were before. A squared plus, we know B squared, 3.6 squared equals 7.4 squared, okay? So now it's gonna be a little bit different. Instead of just adding the sum of the two squares, we're gonna be, first, some, let's figure out what these values are. I don't know these off the top of my head. We have 54.76 equals, and then we've got 3.6 squared, 12.96. And then we have A squared. So what we need to do now is we have to get the A squared by itself. Here's the A squared. We have to get it by itself by isolating the variable. This is a one step, well, a two step equation. So we're gonna subtract 12.96 from both sides to get the A by itself. So we're, let's go ahead and do that. And we get 41.8 equals A squared. Oof, that was a rough two. What do we do from here? We take the square root. So this is easy when we have a calculator nearby. Oops, somehow I messed it up. Uh, ah, 41.8. 8 raised to the 0.5 power. We get A equals 6.465. Now, it asks us to round here. What does it ask us to round to? The nearest 10th. So if you have trouble with rounding, first identify your 10th. It's 4. Now identify the number next to the 10th. It's 6. The 6 tells the 4 to go up. So A equals 6.5. And there's our answer. A equals 6.5. I don't know why I changed to green, but... That's what, that's what I did. All right, let's do another one. I don't know where to put all the decimals. That's kind of lame. Let's look at uh, just number 17, I suppose. We'll make this our last one. Again, identify the sides. Now, if you're having trouble identifying which ones are the legs and which ones are, which one is the hypotenuse, keep in mind the legs are always the one touching the 90 degree angle. So here's our 90 degree angle. The legs are always touching it. So it's gonna be these two. Or if you prefer, Look for the hypotenuse. It's always the longest side, but sometimes it's not clear. The 90 degree angle always opens up to it. It never touches the hypotenuse. 
So we're just missing another side here. This time we can call it B. So we have 6.5 squared. I like to put it in parentheses just so you don't mess up. Plus B squared equals C squared. So now we simplify. I'm going to use purple. Oops, why did I put C? We know C. It equals 9.9. .9. So we have 9.9 .9 and we are going to square it. There we go. Change it to purple and we're going to be done. 6.5 squared equals 42.25 plus B squared equals 9.9 .9 squared equals 98.01. Okay. Now we need to subtract 42.25 from both sides. We get B squared equals minus 42.25. We get 55.76. We have to take the square root of both sides. And we get B equals 7.467. We need to round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so here's our tenths place. We have a six next to it. This tells it to round up. B equals 7.5. There's our final answer for B. Hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out some of my other videos on geometry or Khan Academy or CUDA. And I look forward to seeing you next time on this channel. Take care.